It's now 6.30. I'd like to call this <coughs> City of Manesson Council meeting to order. Could I have a roll call, please? Council Moore Tchaikovsky? Here. Council Person Thomas? Here. Council Manesco? Present. Council McGregor? Here. Mayor Mojo? Present. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Pastor Holmes to come lead us off in a prayer. Thank you, Mayor Moser. Shall we invoke the Spirit of the Lord together? Uh, the invocation is inviting God to come down. And we invite God to please continue to be in Texas where folk that don't understand what occurred and folk in Buffalo, New York who don't understand that evil showed up. And so we're, we, we're inviting the Spirit of God to come and help us in Manessa to help the mayor and council and young men that may be frustrated and don't understand and would pick up a gun or any type of evil. We invite God to be here. Come on, let us call on God and invite him to come down. Father God, we, we call upon you now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Stop by, oh God, uh, Texas, where there are families that are still crying, oh God, asking why. Lord God, 19 young children's lives were stolen and two adults lives were stolen lord god in texas and in the buffalo those were just shopping on a normal day oh god senselessly lost their lives because of hatred father god we've got to do better for what what you have given us you have given us authority and it's time to take authority oh god to put down to refuse to hate and to begin to love one another as you say we are to love our neighbors as ourselves that you have given us a new commandment that we continue to love in spite of those that may not even love us back so father god we invite you to come down lord god that by your holy spirit to get the message through america it is time for america to repent lord god and to have a national day of repentance and a national day of prayer giving you thanks lord god that we can sleep peacefully in our homes and go peacefully to the market lord god and gather together peacefully in the market square lord god and i'm thankful lord god that we are here tonight to first give you honor to give you praise father god for all the glorious works that you've done for all the glorious works that you're doing and what you're still going to do here in this great city of Manesson. Lord God, we pray for great success, Lord God. We pray for, for poverty to be wiped out, oh God. We pray for violence and this to be a drug-free zone, oh God. So we beat back evil and drugs and all those things that represent the kingdom of evil, Lord God. As we usher in the kingdom of light, and we let our light shine that men will see our good works and we glorify your name. Father, thank you, O oh God, for what's going to occur here tonight in the spirit of unity, Lord God. But let us first be united in you and then be united in one another that we can unite the citizens, not only of Manesson, but this entire valley. And let us be a beacon for this entire state. We pray this, we claim this, we believe this, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I'd like the council to review the minutes from the previous session. Somebody make a motion to accept them. Honorable Mayor, 
motion to approve minutes of a previous session of May 12, 2022. Is there a second? Any questions? Please call the roll. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilperson Thomas? Yes. Councilman Orchikowski? Yes. Mayor Mosier? Yes. At this time, I'd like to open the floor for public comment on agenda items only. And Ernie, if you, you would, just tell us which, which items you want to ask questions. We'll make sure we expound upon those during the course of the meeting. Which, which what item is it on the agenda? Well, then ask it at the end. I gave my report last end. meeting, Ernie. We're slightly behind, yes. Ernie, you can talk about Ernie, this at the end of the meeting. That's concern this right now. Okay. At the end of the meeting, we can talk well, about that. It's being addressed. I'm, I know that, but it's being addressed. I made the statement last meeting. I did. I made a comment on it. Oh, well, that has that's not even for public public use. I don't know where you picked that up. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the council. Yeah, Thank you. Any other questions on agenda items? <clears throat> well, let's see. I don't believe we have any um, correspondence either. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, our civil engineer, city engineer, to uh, give us a presentation on the uh, sewer rehabilitation project phase four. Bob Mczeski, WEC Engineers, uh, City Engineers for the City of Manesson. Before I get into uh, the, the progress, I'd like to give a little background on the soil rehabilitation project. It started back in 19, uh, 2010 as a plan to repair the They with the goal to repair the, the sores before they, they collapse and before the, the, the affluent would go over the streets and into, into the river. And the first section that was, was completed, phase 1A, was in the Grand Boulevard area and was completed in 2011. And section 1B was completed in 2013, which is up by the road. And now we're into uh, phase 2, which is the design and construction of the equalization tank that's going to be constructed on Perenni Boulevard. And the city's made an agreement with the Mon Valley Sewage Authority for them to design and construct it and <coughs> maintain it, and, and the city would pay for it. That's phase two. Phase four, I'm going to skip over phase three for a moment, because it's, it's the larger one. The phase four was lit for construction it, on April the 29th, and they received a, a notice to proceed work. They've ordered their material, they've reviewed their, their shop drawings, and the supplies and pipe is supposed to arrive late next week or early the, the following week. And they intend to start construction immediately. Uh, they intend to start on the section from uh, Moffett Street, at Shawnee Park, down onto to Prairie Boulevard, and then proceed on a small section on Delaware Street from Lenawee down to 906 Street. Then the last section, which is probably one of the more difficult ones, is the relocation of the sore line 
on Lower 9th Street. And that's going to involve work from Knox Avenue all the way through Lower 9th down to the Schooner Maker. And it's also going to involve some minor work on McKee and, and, and Reed. And during this time, there's going to be probably a, a two-week two time where vehicles aren't going to be able to cross or use Lower Ninth, or Lower Ninth and Upper Ninth, connect near the northern end of Ninth Street. Uh, during other portions of the project, there is likely to be a, a detour um, from from Schoonmaker down to Third Street, up to Elberts Drive, and then back on Sixth Street to, to, to return to Knox Avenue and Ninth Avenue. Now we don't you know, that we don't anticipate that happening probably until maybe August or September. And we've already talked with the service, the emergency service agencies, the school district, and you know, you know, the bus people and they're all aware of it and we're going to keep everybody up to date. Um, the next project is the phase three section and that includes work from 3rd Street, 12th Street, um, replacement of, of the, the sewer line, the storm sewer on Grand Boulevard right in front of Parks service center and then increase the size of that pipe and to help alleviate the, the flooding that happens in that area occasionally you know, when we have in very heavy storms. And we're going to continue from that location all the way down Perenny Boulevard to the river relining in the existing <coughs> pipe. Now that, that's a pretty big pipe of 72 inches so it's going to take some time. In addition to that, there's going to be a lot of minor work on the side streets. Uh, we're probably 90% complete with the, the drawings and specifications. Uh, we're going to be submitting for the Chapter 105 permit, which involves work with a stream because the pipe on Perenny is it, it carries the, the stream from City Park in in the in the pipe itself, so that you know, that falls under a more strict permit requirement. So you know, that that'll be the application will be submitted for that probably next week or so, and then uh, we're open to have a quick review. But normally they have to have a, a response back within 90 days. So we're probably looking at you know, going out to bid for the third phase in. Realistically, probably fall. And that, you know, that, that'll be probably about a year and a half project. So that's pretty much where we stand right now. But if, if anybody has any questions, I'd be yeah. glad to answer them if I can. I, I, I'd like to know that water that accumulates you know, across the street from um, the pizza shop. Yeah, you know, the, uh, or 906, mm -hmm. and they can tie on. Is that going to be corrected with that pipe coming down? No. No. Yeah, because that always gets flooded. You know, we're looking at that as, as something separate from this. So, yeah. Because all this has already been in. You can, but every time when there's a big rainstorm, it gets flooded. Are there any other questions? I'd be willing. Anybody from Thompson? No, but I really appreciate you coming and, and presenting that. I want to give everybody a test before the evening's over, though. <laughs> okay, now, I don't grade on a curve. <laughs> I, just, I had a question, Paul. I'm sorry about sure. that. So will this help to relieve, relieve any situations that we've been having in the past in front of Frank's Garage or on the Schoonmaker? Um, you, can, you know, you've probably have heard in the past before, and I feel one of those workers slash owners down there that retain a lot of that water down there. It, it may help it, but I don't know if it's going to entirely correct it. 
but that's something we're still looking at. But okay. I think tentatively there's a meeting with the sewage authority and their engineer to discuss the, the renovations they did several years ago in that area. Okay, because I know they've been throwing the clock back and forth, and I just want to make sure that, is, was that being a, you know, a business, a, a, a livelihood, a home, and a busy intersection that, that you know, it floods all the time, and hopefully that will fix uh, the issues that you have down there. Well, it, what was happening when we first was that satellite treatment facility was getting bogged down by debris, yeah. I believe, from the Shawnee vault. Yeah. That's why we're addressing Shawnee first. Okay. Delaware, same thing, that pipe going across there is deteriorating. There's a lot of stone and debris that comes through. But from what I understand, I talked to the uh, because I've seen some of the pictures the mayor showed, and it's, yeah, there's the rocks and debris and areas. It's hard to believe. Yeah. <laughs> so once those two issues are corrected, the perennial pipe is reestablished, and the EQ tanks in place. It should make a significant difference, but by the same token, these heavy rains and stuff, you've got to still expect to get wet. Okay. Uh, issues exist that we hope will solve themselves here in the near future as far as Frank's garage goes. Thank you so much, John. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us all. Thank you. I really appreciate, appreciate you coming. Well. Well. <laughs> I know that it's uh, short, but this is a major uh, expense to the citizens of Vanessa, and, and I think it's important that everybody understand what, what we're doing with this uh, $27 a month we're collecting with everybody's sewage every month. And it really is a major project. It's really something that uh, is coming to pass, and I think we're all going to see the benefits from it. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask our solicitor for his report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, uh, the mayor and myself met with the school district superintendent and their solicitor regarding the tax forgiveness program. Uh, the meeting went very well. Uh, they stated that they will discuss it with the board at their upcoming agenda and then voting meeting in June. And right now we're working on getting a meeting with the county representatives to finalize their part of this program. Um, the tax claim office has been busy going through um, some of the properties that were transferred last year uh, and they're rectifying the issues they had with those. So it's moving forward, it's taking longer than we would like, but we are in the process of getting all three taxing bodies on board and moving this forward. The second item, there is the first reading tonight for an amendment of um, the quality of life ordinance. That's a property maintenance code that the city adopted in 2018, I believe. Um, it operates on a ticketing system as opposed to a fine system. It's more efficient. I work with Mr. Nestor and the code enforcement officer uh, who suggested that the fines move from $25 to $50 for the initial violation. Um, the second violation within a 12-month period will be $75. The third offense in a year is $100. And each offense after three will be $150 per violation. And that's all I have for this week, Mayor. Okay. We can talk about this at the end. And, uh, and I can go through it briefly. Um, it, it's similar property maintenance issue, high grass, accumulation of rubbish, and those items. It's just a more efficient way for the city to enforce you know, property maintenance issues as opposed to filing a citation after a notice of violation and then proceeding to a magistrate hearing. Thank you. Uh, city Treasurer has already presented his report. Do you have anything you'd like to add? No report. Thank you. Well, let's see. I've got a couple of things I want to talk about very briefly. First off, the uh, meeting with the. Uh, you the, the control? Excuse me. You want to ask the controller? Did I skip one? Yeah. I right. apologize. Okay, controller. Yes. I have no report. I gave my report uh, at the last meeting. However, this statement that the controller's report for Monday. The other day when I was signing checks, I came across a check that was made out to Ron Moser. 
I asked for clarification on that, and they gave me the backup. It was for the purchase of a laser printer for our city clerk and a laptop for the city administrator. That's correct. Is that a true statement? It's yes, that's correct. For the city administrator? Yes. Okay. The other thing is, I noticed that you purchased it evidently on your credit card. That's correct. And it means that we have to pay taxes on that. The taxes amounted to $47, which is equivalent to one cartridge that we have to get a purchase order for. So agree. these two items that we get a purchase order. The, uh, first off, I did have permission from the CFO of the company. This was a uh, Staples going out of business, and there was really no opportunity. It was buy it then or, or it was gone. So I, I did exactly that. I bought it off the show floor. Okay, so then there was no purchase order. But we're going to the extremes where the people in the office have to get that. a uh, purchase order for small dollar items. Right. It's like we're micromanaging the employees, like we don't trust them. I think that there is a, well, we can talk more about this, but I think there is very much a, a issue with the cash flow in the city, even to this day. That uh, we can talk more about this in a few minutes, but the bottom line is that we have about 1.3 million dollars in the general fund as we speak right now. We're burning at about a quarter million dollars per month. Along this fall, we're going to be in the same predicament that we've been in every single year since the have been attending council meetings. That money is going to be tight. So. Our, our uh, CFO, Tony, is being very prudent with, with uh, expenditures. The uh, laser printer that Cheryl got was pretty much something that Cheryl had asked for, and it was the cheapest way that we could get a printer up there to replace the one that she had that was defective. And the uh, laptop computer, was we bought that at about one-third of the cost of a new laptop that was normal with that capability. Did you inform the rest of the council you were going to do this? I had talked to the CFO at the time. Well, the rest of the council didn't count. Well, apparently. Obviously. There's uh, some things I guess a mayor gets a little bit of privilege to do. And the other thing that I'm wondering to do. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm no, sorry. You're, I'm looking, wondering... you're looking at almost $1,000. And I'm not saying that the purchase one that was necessary. But the rest of the council should have been informed that that was going to happen. Sure. Even if you're going to do it, you should have let, at least have, let us know you wanted to do it. I mean, I don't, I don't kind of like coming to me and finding out you guys spent almost a thousand dollars. That was just the two of you to make a decision. And I don't. Well, I'm not saying it's not necessary. And I, I just, do, I do apologize, and, and perhaps that was a mistake on my part. That, that uh, I do try to be transparent, and that was not transparent. And I do apologize to council for that. It was something that uh, was done at the spur of the moment. I happened to be at the store, and I saw that this stuff was going out of the store very quickly. It was at the very end of their, their thing. I called Tony. We talked about it. We decided that at that time it was the most efficient way to solve a couple of issues that we had. Is there a motion in here to approve this purchase? There is a motion to approve the, the uh, the budget on yeah, it's on the bills. It's on the bills, it's on the bills. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention is the check that I signed was for $970.32. However, the backup for the two the laptop and the printer is only $836. There's a there was a a a, uh, a, a, a petty cash receipt in there as well that had to do with the business cards that are sitting in front of Don and and Lois at this point. Okay. And, then and that was talked about with, without, with, throughout the council. I asked each one of them about how they would proceed with that. Okay. The other thing I wanted to ask about is uh, I haven't seen a notice in the paper to replace Debbie with the treasurer's office. Until we get through the, there was one that was done. Just one. We ran twice, as a matter of fact. But the point being is, until we get the through with the union contract negotiations, there's really not much we can do. Nobody wants to do that for $14 an hour. Well, that's 
That's true. However, it's time for the school taxes to be going on. I understand. So how is that going to be I, uh, I asked the union to give us the ability to do a temporary employee to get through this, but that too is an issue. You had a, you had a temporary employee, and the, the date final for that is next Tuesday. I understand. So that was, you had a temporary employee for what, almost two months? Mm -hmm. How long are you we going to need a temporary employee? Because until we get a permanent. It's my understanding. We had a part time, your, your wife was, that was, 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 was assisting part time. And the pre premise of that, when that was initially set, was to train a replacement. Yes, I'm aware of that. And we never had the ability to get a replacement. I was aware of that also, but I'm also aware that the um, taxes for the school may not go out on time because there are some a lot of things that haven't been rectified in the records. Well, that's that's something that uh, our treasurer is going to have to help out with. Then. That's his responsibility. It's going to be a little rough without having an employee in there. I understand. If you got somebody you think is going to do it, I'm all ears. I, I have a question. Why does this thing always turn on? Probably a bad Okay. some of these things too then. First off, um, um, the tax exoneration program is moving forward as the solicitor indicated. Uh, I do have some databases that that were very difficult to, to bring forth. We found a list of uh, parcel IDs on John Harheis computer it had nothing other than parcel IDs, no names, no addresses, nothing. But it was titled Exonerated Property. So that was a list of quite a few properties, 100 and some odd properties. So from there, we took a, a stack of, of properties that were left on the table that had developer agreements, and we, entered those, we matched those up with names and so forth. I found another list that was dated December 30th that was uh, uh, also uh, something that was prepared by the prior administration. They didn't, bear in mind, they never did come forth and provide any assistance or guidance to what they had going on when we were in the office. But nonetheless, we, we, I compiled all this information, and it comes out there's 127 properties involved with the uh, tax forgiveness program that the prior administration had done. Those will be the first properties that we're going to try to move through this new process where we can address the county and the school at the same time. All of this is very important because right now, there's a lot of activity at the county level that in the next few days, and I do mean a few days, they are going to be making a decision of how they're going to be spending some $12 million and if that will address life in the five different areas of uh, Westmoreland County. Those five different zones, two of which are in Manessa. So, Right now, there's a lot at stake right now with getting these properties that people have invested in and done work with and so forth, getting them accounted for and documented properly with the, the county so that they don't, 
We don't need the county to say, okay, we're going to remove this blighted piece of property when somebody's actually invested in it and working on it. By the same token, if there's people that got into this program and had second thoughts, they've decided they really don't want this property, they don't have the resources to, to bring it up to code and so forth, um, I would like to visit with them too because we probably need to take them out of that program and get them moved over into uh, some other program, such as the demolition process. To that end, um, I will be sending letters out to everybody that is known that, that was in that program that I have records for. And I'm not going to pretend that I've got good records on all of it. It's what I put together thus far. And see if people can respond to me and let me know what their intentions are with that property. Because I want to fully honor the, the in the spirit of tax exoneration. And in doing so, I hopefully we will have the school and the county on board in the near future and it will be a very complete process of, of tax exoneration. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, the, uh, even the county has indicated as part of their, their process that they would like to do as much renovation as they possibly can. In other words, they don't want to just leave total vacant blocks everywhere that they go to. They want to renovate where they can. So it's all important that we get all our records up to, to, to the best possible condition we can get them in. On next month, on the 15th, we will have the second meeting of our task force that we set aside that's based upon the uh, comprehensive plan. But this task force that includes nonprofits, for profits, Habitat for Humanity, all, all different people will be meeting again with, with hopefully clear direction. Maybe by that time we will know where the county's going and uh, what, what our future is with that this, this happening. Um, another thing that, that's uh, been going on is everybody is aware you can now go down to history. We finally got that process, that building down. It's re road is open. We're moving forward. Um, to that end, I've been working with the county because they own the Fifth Street Hotel. They, uh, they too, are trying to make plans to remove that building as well. Um, bottom line is, soon we will be forming yet another task force, and it will be primarily to find, to market, uh, find ways to market Manesson, to find somebody to come into Manesson, to invest in Manesson, to to repopulate these, these vacant, prop, vacant lots that we now have in downtown. There's nothing to be gained by vacant, vacant lots. We need to have businesses come back in and, and uh, do things there. And there's, it's a blank slate. We can put anything here that, that we want. What we need is people that have investors, that are entrepreneurs, that want to do something and start moving forward with that. Um, at this time, I'd like somebody to make a motion for me. We have a, a resident on Crescent Street that has a handicapped uh, child that we need to sign for. I'd like to make a motion to supply handicapped signs for Manesson residents at 4 Crescent Drive in the city of Manesson for a school age and bus transport transport a child at that address. Could I have a second? I'll second. Any questions? Uh, question, Mayor. Uh, Chief, have you guys been able to uh, survey the area for the traffic for, you know, for that mother that called about the speeding and you know not stopping for the bus and, and uh, City Administrator, were we able to figure out too about um, why the bus doesn't have a sign? On they're getting the information on that constantly on why and, and if we can update that if we can update that vehicle to. Okay. And I'm not sure of the code situation, and I want to run that by the solicitor also. But uh, yeah, that's moving forward to find out why that bus doesn't have all the accoutrements that a normal bus uh, that drives yeah, right kind of shock when I see that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Hey, maybe a few passes up there and go to Forster. Okay. Fly and say I've been your presence. Thank you so much, Chief. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, Call the roll, please. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Grader? Aye. 
Councilwoman Chakowsky? Yes. Councilperson Thomas? Yes. Mayor Mojic? Yes. So I'd like to make a motion to permit the Mon Valley Emergency Medical Services to host and conduct a tactical life-saving course on May 27th, May 28th, and May 29th, 2022 at City Park to prepare for life-saving techniques for active shooter scenarios, bombings, and MCI scenarios. The course offers in-depth training scenarios that utilize both classroom and field exercises. Can I have a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Yes. Um, I received a call from Bill Hess, and I'm looking at the letter that he sent you, and he had said that he would like to use that building, the old city hall, uh, for some rescue uh, scenarios that he wanted to run. And um, I noticed in the letter, though, that he didn't include that. That's not possible. Yeah. I don't know what the, uh, I just told him I would bring it to council. Yeah, and that's fine, and I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know what the status of that building is. It was, we moved over here because we were told that there's gold over there. Oh, there it is. We, we really need to uh, not spend any time over there or allow other people over there until we understand oh, that they remediated and whatnot. You won't get an argument from me about that. I was just asked to bring it to council's attention, and that's what I did. The other thing I think that we need to make sure that everybody's well aware of, I think that there's a lot of people very sensitive to what's happened in Texas and, and other places. When we're talking about active shooter scenarios, bombings, and NCI scenarios, uh, you're going to see a city park, uh, EMS, possible helicopters, uh, possibly hear, hear something that sounds like gunshots. We all need to be very aware and at least we'll know the difference between what's being in, in practice and what might occur somewhere else, but I think everybody's very sensitive to that, that whole issue right now. So all I'm really asking is for citizens to be aware that there will be training up there should council approve this. Question, Mayor. Um, if I recall last meeting, did we approve an event to that's supposed to be happening in City Park with children? That's the day before. So that's down, yeah. down at the bottom. Of the oh, it's at the boat, it's at the boat launch, right? I couldn't remember if that was at the boat launch or if that was at City Park or if that was lower part of the It's at the walking track. Part of the walking track. Walking track. Walking track. Okay. Walking track. Okay. It's at the walking track. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure you know. I don't want to alarm any children too. They're going to be right. saying. Right. Chief, you're going to be involved in that, aren't you? We are. We won't. We're not part of it, but you know, the floor of the park will be there. Uh, as for the training aspect, I was down there. They are only going to be doing the practical stuff on Sunday. The uh, event that is happening is on Saturday. So the kids won't be there. The, the kids will not be involved. Right. We'll, we'll, there won't be any type of. That's good. Thank you again, Chief. So they're actually just prepping for Sunday. They're, I think they're, they're waiting to hear back on the sun's going here. So they were going to use their station to do the. In classroom and other practical stuff, but on Sunday, as far as I know, they're going to be up there at City Hall. Who are the participants in this exercise? I believe it's all emergency people, emergency services, EMS primarily, but the. Uh, yeah, I, I. I just wondered why the police aren't involved. It's I don't know the answer to that question, to be honest. Not my idea. Can we have a vote? Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Mester? Aye. Councilperson Thomas? Yes. Councilman Chapowski? Yes. Mayor Lowe? Yes. I've uh, pretty much had my discussion, so at this point, we need to talk about uh, some some money that was discerned during this, the CDBG public hearing that we had. Would you like to make a motion? Make a motion to allocate a payment from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, ARPA, to Westcom Wireless, 2773 Leechburg Road, Lowell Borough, PA, 15068, in the amount of $26,086.86, 
for nine new radio units, chargers, programming, and two-year extended warranty for utilization by the Manessa Fire Department. Can I have a second? Second, man. Are there any questions? All in all. Councilman Chikowski? Yes. Council Person Thomas? Yes. Council McGregor? Aye. Council Nestor? Aye. Mayor Leisure? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Greatly appreciate that. This time I'll turn it over to Councilmember Kornjowski. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to add five to tra transfer five thousand dollars to the health care account to replenish the account to a ten thousand dollar level. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Hold on. Council Nestor? Aye. Council McGregor? Aye. Council Person Thomas? Yes. Council Murchikowski? Yes. Mayor Motion? Yes. I am, I make a motion to move the amount of $7,103.74 from the general fund account to line usage fund to repay the balance of the $71,000 that was borrowed on January 6, 2022. I'll second. Any questions? Just so everybody's clear about this, and we thought last meeting we did this, we were under the price. I was under the impression that we, that the council voted and passed, we'll immediately transfer the 65000 that first meeting to cover payroll. Uh, that's true, but we ended up 70, having 71000 instead transferred, so we had to make a difference up to pay the rest of that back, so hence this motion. Thank you. Can we have a second? Call the roll. Councilperson Thomas? Yes. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Chikowski? Yes. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Mayor Motion? Yes. Make a motion to pay invoices from the general fund account of the city of Manessa in the amount of $278,607.94. All individual bills and totals to be paid out of the general account are already attached as attachment A. Second. Any discussion? Call roll. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Council Person Thomas? Yes. Council Murchikowski? Yes. Mayor Motion? Yes. A motion to pay invoices from liquid fuel account of the City of Manessa in the amount of $13,008.15. All bills will be paid out of the liquid fuel account and are attached in cash and fee. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Oh, Council McGregor? Aye. Council Person Thomas? Yes. Council Minister? Aye. Council Murchikowski? Yes. Mayor Motion? Yes. Make a motion to pay invoices from the Parks Fund account in the City of Manessa in the amount of $2,371.06. All bills total will be paid out of the Public uh, Parks Fund account and they are attachment C. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Hold on. Council Person Thomas? Yes. Councilman Wojciechowski? Yes. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Mayor Lowe? Yes. Make a motion to pay invoices from the grant fund in the amount of $2,643.80. Again, as attached in attachment D. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Call the roll. Council Person Thomas? Yes. Councilman Wojciechowski? Yes. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Mayor Motion? Yes. Make a motion to pay invoices from the recreational fund account for the city of Manessa in the amount of $79.99 as attached in attachment E. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Questions? Call the roll. Council Person Thomas? Yes. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Gregor? Aye. Councilman Wojciechowski? Yes. Mayor Motion? Yes. Make a motion to pay invoices from the line usage fund account for the city of Manessa in the amount of $6,372.67 as attached as attachment F. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Call the roll. Council McGregor? Aye. Council Nestor? Aye. Council Murchikowski? Yes. Council Person Thomas? Yes. Mayor Motion? Yes. Make a motion to pay the business municipal loan de debt service payment to Farmers National Bank in the amount of $38,048.90. The invoice in the packet is in as attachment G. Is there a second? Second, Mayor. Any questions? Call the roll. 
Is there a second? Second. Questions? Call the roll. Councilman Nestor? Aye. Councilman Chikowski? Yes. Councilman Person Thomas? Yes. Councilman McGregor? Aye. Mayor Logan? Yes. Make a motion to pay business municipal loan debt service payment to the Farmers National Bank in the amount of $58,739.64 as an attachment H. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Call the roll. Council McGregor? Aye. Council Nestor? Aye. Council Person Thomas? Yes. Council Lord Chikowski? Yes. Mayor Budget? Yes. Uh, the balances for the accounts as of this morning was the general the general fund had one million fifty three dollars one million fifty three thousand five hundred and ninety dollars and thirty cents. The health care account has three thousand five hundred and forty three dollars and thirty six cents. The parks fund has twenty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars and ninety two cents. The grant fund has three thousand fifty three thousand seven hundred and nineteen dollars sixty five cents. Liquid fuels has fifty seven thousand five hundred and ninety four dollars and eighty four cents. The recreational board has nine hundred and eighty four dollars and seventy six cents. Line usage fee has a balance of four four hundred and forty two thousand two hundred and eleven dollars and ninety seven cents. Debt service has a balance of three hundred and sixty thousand nine hundred and eight dollars and thirty two cents. Our escrow has a balance of $54,044.83, and American Rescue Art Money has a balance of $70,298.83. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I would like to invite everybody to pay attention to those attachments that uh, he prepared for everybody. Uh, it does show where the money's going. Uh, I, have one, I have one other thing. Okay. I would like to point out his. Uh, uh, it's been brought out before we made a payment to the 2000, 2021 MMO. Mm -hmm. We have, it was $360,000 we owed originally. We are now, with all the interest in all state, we, uh, we now are going to $178,000. And hopefully, uh, if we get some more money that possibly I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch about the telephone poles, that could equate to close to $100,000. So we will be hopefully left around $78,000 left to pay the MMO, MMO off this year. Very good. Any other questions? Thank you, Mayor. Lois. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I have a street report and a library report. The streets department throughout the month of April emptied garbage twice a week downtown. They cold patched as many streets as possible, answered about 200 PA1 calls, cut the city blocks throughout the city. They turned all the waters on at all the ball fields in town, took off the salt spritters from all the trucks, had the streets, we were out as much as possible throughout the month. The vector truck is in the process of being repaired. They have the parks as needed and they are currently in contract negotiations. I think a meeting is scheduled for the month of June and June. As far as the library report for April 2022, just a few few things to note. Um, they actually had about 1,704 people go throughout the library in the month of April. Um, the summer reading club will begin in mid-June for the young children. And just a reminder that the 2022 library budget is available on the library website. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you. John. Uh, Honorable Mayor, members of council, city administration, and the citizens of Madison, here's the following report for the Public Safety Department ending in March 2022. The city of Madison's police department received $200 for parking permits, miscellaneous collection, copies of police action reports, 165, for a total miscellaneous collection of 165. Current receipt, uh, receipts for the District Justice Office, vehicle code fines collected $798.71, crime code fines collected $418.75, city ordinance collected $188.70, total receipts from the District Justice Office $1,406.16, total receipts collected for April 2022 
I don't know why I said March to begin right for so I apologize. It's $1,771.16. Um, total citations, 54, year to date, 266. The magistrate's report. Uh, vehicle code, $563.58. Crime codes, $443.85. Code enforcement, $106.36 for a total of $1,113.76. 79 cents. Here's the following report from the Mon Valley Emergency Medical Service. Emergency calls 152, fire standbys 4, full incidents 156. Here are the fill all and code activity report ending in April 2022. Uh, habitation permits 8, correction letters 21. Animal complaints, four. Miscellaneous complaints, three. Citations, nine. Inspections, five. Building permits, three. Office meetings with residents, 12. Zoning permits, three. Demo permits, two. Hearings, four. Zoning hearing board appointments, six. Um, currently at this time, I do not have um, any of the financial information intake um, from the code office, and I just hope that everyone will be greatly appreciative and patient uh, due to the circumstances, circumstances that we are facing um, in the Treasurer's Department. So I thank you, Jerry, and your department for being patient and working with us. Thank you, sir. Here's the following report for the fire department. Automatic fire alarms, four. Natural gas leak, one. Vehicle accidents, four. <coughs> zone, one. Carbon monoxide, one. Smoke scare, one. Structure fire and shallory, one. Physical rescue, one. Full calls, 21. Full responding, 270. Average responding per call, 12.85. Total man hours, 241.50. Uh, this will be the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Madison, Westmoreland County, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, amending Chapter 300 of the City Code of Ordinance, the Quality of Life Ordinance. Um, as stated from the solicitor, we are doubling the funds. And that is all I have there. Thank you. I yield the floor. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Dunn. Uh, Park Department report for April. 2022, picked up litter in the limits of the city park, changed oil and filters in all the tractors, changed lights in city buildings, turned the water on in all the parks, cut the ball fields. Porter Jobs came in for the parks in the amphitheater and helped the street department as needed. Also, uh, just to uh, Touch base with you again. We're going to bring someone in for this meeting to see how we do. We'd like to have the three vendors come back in to add the police department and redo their bids to add we that. Have to, a that uh, like to have it done by the next meeting so we can, we can do that. Uh, but in the interim, I would request, and I don't know how this would work with, with council, to have one of the vendors who indicated a price of only $247 to do a complete cleaning of the building in the interim period while we're working through the bids because it, it is in need of some cleaning. Um, I, Councilor Chikowska, that could be done under a PO possibly or uh, however you felt we should do it, but that's just the process we would like to try to do while we're getting the bids for the, uh, the additional work. I have no problem with issuing the PO. This council has a problem with that. Would it be a one-time cleaning until the bids come in? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just one show, and then what they'll do is uh, they'll submit their bid for both the police station and here, and then we can have three bids to consider and work on that one. It's just that it's in need of a cleaning at the moment. I don't want to wait.
wait an, or wouldn't want to wait another two weeks to do that. Uh, well, uh, is that so okay, Joe? Yeah, it's a, for a one-time thing, you just can't enter into a contract without voting, and you can't vote on this evening, but a purchase order for that amount would be okay. That's, That's what, what I just mean. wanted to check and see if we could work through. Well, we have a plan. Yes. Go ahead. Send me an email. With that? Send me an email and I'll respond, respond back so it's in writing. Okay. It's about a PO and everybody's talking about it. Very good. Thanks. At this time, I'd like to open the floor for public comment. Pick up from what I was trying to start okay. at the beginning. I wasn't picking on uh, the treasurer, and I'm not picking on the wife. What I was trying to get them to say is how things are being backed up. And things are going to get worse come with the... Uh, as uh, Roseland said, when the high school and the school taxes come in. So you people did a full court press to knock that building down. In my book, having the proper person to hold all the uh, accounting here intact, that's just as important. Right. I so agree. Why, why isn't anybody looking for somebody? And here's something else. You don't wait for the union to tell you who to take. It, it's up to you people to pick somebody, then the union is supposed to accept it. You guys have it the other way around. Well, I'm sorry. Can you? Yeah. If the way you just described it was possible, um, everybody's lives up here would be much easier. But the union does have to agree to any changes. Yeah, yeah agree, but they're not in charge of who they're going to go looking for. They have to say yes. Yeah, I know, but they don't go looking for it. You people have to do the looking. That's why the people elected you, to be leaders. And then the, the union the people are supposed to either say yes or no. So well, you, people, you people haven't picked anybody yet. Only one applied. Well, yeah. I, I, how much are they? We could have said the same thing with the building, but they did a full court press and they finally got it down. You have to do the same effort to get somebody here. That building wasn't represented by a union contract. <laughs> So what? You got one obstacle versus another obstacle. There's obstacles in life. You people got to overcome meeting, them. There's a meeting with the union mayor, June 7th. Yeah, yeah, but are you looking for anybody or you're waiting for the union to uh, pick up the that, whole ball of wax? We, we, we've got a person. Yeah, that's we've right. got a person. We just haven't been able to hire them yet. Well, why is everything on one because basket? The, the union contract sets the starting wage for that position. You got eight or nine union, bids for that uh, building, okay? Talk, and we only got one person for, for for a vital, you know, accounting uh, personnel that we need. Ernie, Ernie, they have to abide by the union. Yeah, I, yeah. And the city enter into a contract, an agreement. I mean, they have to abide by that. Yeah, I'm not saying not to abide, but the leadership has to be picked up from the council. Just like you guys did with the building. We're ready to go, so the union says. Okay, so, so when are we going to get this done? Before the next meeting? There's a meeting June 7th. Okay, well, don't throw it all on the council. I mean, he, he got no votes here. He, he, it's a voting representative that he's supposed to do this. Just trying to explain See, how the process works. the first advertisement, we can only advertise for $14 an hour. But now once the negotiations start again, we can hopefully agree to up that starting wage so we can possibly get some more people in and for the position. But we're happy, this is where we're at right now until we can raise that amount to get more people in and for it. Okay, I have a second issue. If people were in a hurry to knock down the building, I know we're going to put a task force together to get, but also you're in a hurry to sell that space between the library and uh, you know, an aggressive space, up to the census. Okay, I heard now he's going to sit on it for a while. You got no plans. That's not the city. Yeah, but didn't you approve it? No, it's not our problem. You guys have nothing to do with it. It's not our problem. But what I'm trying to say is we got property now and it's going to be collecting dust. You people clean the area, but now it's going to be collecting dust. 
we got to get people here that's going to do something you with what we're giving them. Absolutely. That's all we're saying. Absolutely. We're ready. Okay, well, those are the only two things. Okay. Thank you. Ernie, Ernie, Ernie. You know I always follow the best. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right uh, behind you. Delmar Heppel, Municipal Fire Chief. I just want to say again, I've said this a couple times, but I'm glad you guys, uh, everyone's on board with the importance of uh, of the radios for the fire department. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chief. And thank you, uh, your women and lady, or men and women for helping us. Thank you, Chief. I have to follow you. see a bigger shoes than I can ever right. Nancy Horvath, 1417 Arlington. This is a very positive thing. I want you to know that my trash has been picked up, grass clippings and all. I trimmed a shred of a bush in the back, filled the garbage can. They took it. So thank you, thank you. I talked to the supervisor. I think it's how I forget now. But he said if they don't pick up, you call and let me know. But he was to talk to all the throwers and to see if they would take sure. things that are not always in bags. So, yay! <laughs> Thank you. I just want to add one more. People were passing these hired fees for maintenance property. Do you have like a detailed uh, like structure of what will put somebody in violation? You have that all spelled out? Or what do you call it? Whatever the uh, code of enforcer decides. Okay. The full, the full ordinance is on the uh, internet. But I keep that it was just amending a portion of that ordinance, just the fees, but the rest of the ordinance explaining the violations. Okay, are very good. Because the public is not aware of it. Now, there's a code section on the city website that will direct you to where the okay. ordinance is. Thanks for clearing that up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be uh, 45 more Traver. I don't need to speak to. I want to thank the chief of police, and I think we all need to thank the chief of police because he has attended every goddamn meeting since uh, since you took office, and he knows what's going on in the city. So you don't have to come down and cry to him about what's going on. He does know what's going on. Right. And he's no, taking care of a lot of the issues. So he, if, I was, if I was you or you guys, I'd give him a five-year contract. <laughs> 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 Anybody else have any comments they'd like to make? I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second, Mary. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.